Yes, you read that title correctly. I thought it would be a fantastic idea to try and spend 100 days in Stardew Valley panning. I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. But the occasion for said challenge was because the channel hit 100,000 subscribers. And for that I am forever grateful to all of you wonderful people who support me. Aww. So really, it's on me. Nonetheless, you're all here to watch a grown man lose his mind panning for 100 days straight. So without further ado, let's get right into it. And well, here we are on day one. The rain today is really depicting what the next 100 days is gonna do to me. The fact of the matter is, we're all here because of a certain segment that continues to pop up on my channel. And that is of course the well-renowned Panning with Poxiel. So I'm gonna do this once and once only, so here it is and say it with me now. Panning with Poxiel! If you don't know how this segment works because you clicked on this video thinking this guy's nuts and haven't seen any of my 100 days videos, then I'll lay it all out for you. I pan in the dig site river on Ginger Island for the elusive lucky ring. And uh, yeah, that, that's about it. But hey, everyone loves it. Unfortunately, we didn't get any lucky rings today. So we're moving right along to day two. Now a few of you might have noticed that my pan isn't the normal looking pan that we know and love. That's because I took the panning upgrades mod from the mega modded series I've done, which allows me to reach those hard to pan spots. Also, I've got the UI sweet mod installed so that you can all see what my luck is for the day, and so I don't get any comments saying that I cheated every day into being max luck. Even though today is max luck, uh, well look, I'm not helping my point here. We also started on the second because I had to set a few things up beforehand, so yes it is the third today, but really it's day two. Leave me alone, I tried my hardest. We panned up two lucky rings today, which is a pretty good start to the challenge. And another thing you'll notice as the day finishes up is my row of handy dandy fancy chests. The two purple ones are for everything I pan up that isn't a lucky ring. The five yellow ones are for, well, well, lucky rings. I'm optimistic I can fill all five chests by the end of these 100 days and you better be too. Day three, I was back to the grind of panning in the dig site river. Although the terrible luck was making it hard to get anything good going and all of my panning efforts came up short today. No lucky rings for us today unfortunately, but it was pretty peaceful watching the island birds fly past overhead. It was much of the same believe it or not on day 4. Despite having an amazing luck day, I came away with a big fat zero amount of lucky rings. Which was more closely representing how these panning with pox seals usually turn out. I took fate into my own hands on day 5. This may seem controversial but I spawned in 999 ginger ales, gave myself the special charm, and also spawned in 999 lucky lunches. Now before you throw your phone across the room in absolute disgust and start yelling about the integrity of modern man, hear me out, hear me out. I just wanted more lucky rings. You know, I think that's an okay thing to want and I, I will die on this hill, damn it. No, but seriously, I just wanted to pan out more lucky rings. It may seem like karma is in full effect today, however, because I didn't get a single ring today. It was a different story on day 6 though, I got my third lucky ring today. Who's laughing now, huh? Still you, probably, because I have 94 days left of this godforsaken challenge. My spirits were lifted on day 7 because a max luck day, plus a ginger ale, and a lucky lunch was sure to bring me a good day of fortune. And I was certainly not disappointed with not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not even seven, but eight lucky rings in the span of one day. You may wonder if I feel bad at all, and to that I'd say no. No I don't. Adding them to my lucky ring chest that night gave me that small hit of dopamine that's gonna get me through to the end of this challenge. The bad luck was back on day 8 and safe to say I wasn't having as much fun panning today. I missed the feeling of seeing lucky rings already. Same goes for day 9, the rain was back and made for a moody backdrop for another day without panning up a precious lucky ring. Day 10 I was able to pan up a single ring today. It's not much but it'll have to do. I'll be honest, I can't keep this charade going for all 100 days. Oddly enough, panning gets pretty repetitive. So let's roll it into a montage before we start answering some Q&A questions. Here we go! Ooh. 
I'm gonna cut into the montage really quickly to do a day 20 check-in to let you in on how we're doing so far. The regular chests have been filled up pretty nicely and we have a few full stacks of stuff. The lucky ring chests on the other hand are looking very healthy. I wish my regular playthroughs were filled with this many but alas. And we pass a fifth of the way through this challenge we're sitting pretty with 30 lucky rings so far so not too shabby. As I've said, panning gets pretty repetitive, so I decided to do a Q&A to pass the time while I do that boring stuff in the background. The first one comes from Alyssa Rose, and they ask, I just wanted to know what your favourite part of Vanilla Stardew Valley is. I'd say my favourite part of Vanilla Stardew Valley is the exploration. Finding the mines for the first time in the Skull Caverns, travelling to the desert and exploring the Skull Caverns, exploring all of Ginger Island and tipping it upside down for golden walnuts. There's so much content to explore and I, I just love that about the game. Margia Greek asks, how did you become a YouTuber? Uh, that's an interesting one because at the start of 2022, I had just graduated from tertiary study with my bachelor's degree in performing arts. <laughs> I know, it's fancy, I know. But then this little thing called COVID, uh, not many people heard about it, um, kind of killed off a lot of performing arts gigs. So it was a bit rough having just graduated into an industry that wasn't running a lot. So I took a chance on content creation and I spent about four months trialing and failing and, and testing a whole bunch of content. It was stuff like Destiny 2 content, Rocket League content, Hitman 3 content. None of it took off or anything. And so I decided to try 100 days in Stardew Valley but the first video I ever made on Stardew Valley uh, it genuinely sucked it was so horrible I couldn't even post it uh, I think it was called 100 days in hardcore Stardew Valley it was truly an awful attempt but what I did was I went back and I I watched it and I took notes on it and I took everything that I liked from that video I rejigged it to a better video idea I did it again and that became how far can I get in 100 days of Stardew Valley which was the first first proper video that I ever posted and it's one of my best performing videos now and yeah that's kind of how it all started. Z Bustin oh my god I can't believe I almost fell for that well this person asks how's your relationship with Abigail going uh well, well frankly I'd rather not talk about it no 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 we're, we're on the mend uh, she's done some pretty spiteful things but I'm I'm pretty forgiving Caleb asks, what does the future of the channel look like? I'd like to think there's a lot more Stardew Valley in the future, however I'm kind of planning on like branching out to games that are similar in nature as the channel moves forward. Uh, slowly though, I'm not going to do like a hard 180 and turn into like a slime making channel or anything like that. So you'll start, you'll see other games kind of like what I did with Graveyard Keeper, kind of just sprinkled in amongst the Stardew Valley videos as well. Ryan Castles asks, what advice can you give to someone who is starting to make Stardew content? Uh, some advice I'd give to you is definitely to do a lot of research figure out what videos do well, what video types are kind of oversaturated. Uh, also figure out your strengths as a content creator. Are you good at long videos or short videos? And the most important thing you can do is to just do it and see what happens. Um, don't be afraid to fail because that's how you learn. Aww. Cookie asks, what's the hardest or most time consuming part of making videos? For me, it's definitely editing because I do everything myself. Recording the gameplay is pretty simple enough. Scripting is my strong suit because of what I studied. I'm still learning a lot about editing as I grow as a creator but um, but for sure that is the most time consuming part of making videos is editing because I had to do it myself and I'm still learning. Barry asks where did the name Poxiel come from? I get this question a lot and it's as simple as word association. I spent about two days on my notes app on my phone doing word associations with names that weren't real names so I was writing a long list of weird and wonderful names that didn't exist and like trying to put letters together to try and make something um, until I came across the name Poxiel I as I wrote it out I thought oh my god that's it that's the one so I then went and checked the availability of the name across all platforms like Twitch and YouTube and Twitter and all of that stuff and then I claimed it for myself and that's how the name Poxiel came to be why Porridger asks and to that I say, why not?
AJ asks, how did you get such an amazing girlfriend? I have no idea. Like I always say, I'm the luckiest guy in the world, and that is honestly just straight up facts. Uh, we've been together for just about four years now, uh, as of this recording, and it's safe to say I have definitely found my forever person and that I am always grateful for. And hey, honestly, if you want to see me play 100 Days with my girlfriend calling the shots, then let me know in the comments below, we'll make that happen. I think that'd be pretty fun. Wild Tiji asks, why did you start YouTube and what are your future goals and dreams and who was my role model when starting YouTube? Well, I kind of already answered that first part, but my goals and dreams have always been, and forever will be, to create a community, no matter how big, that accepts, loves, and respects everyone who wants to be a part of it. I could stay at 100,000 subs, or I could grow to a million subscribers. Either way, my goal will always be to have a loving community who can hang out, have fun, and accept everyone for who they are. As for role models, I think I honestly had so many that I couldn't really list them, so, and I still do um, have role models, but I, I don't think I could, I could list them out because there's just so many. I watch so much YouTube. Anna Gioi. Anna G. Anna Gioia. Anna G. Or Anna asks. How long does it usually take to make a 100 day episode? Now I'd say on average it takes roughly 80 to 100 hours. So I, gu I guess quite a lot goes into making a video when you add up the time recording, scripting and editing, but it's kind of a guesstimate. I, I've never really crunched the numbers on it, but I would guess around that. Daxley asks, do you really like your mods? Nah, I hate them actually. Oh, of course I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I love every single one of them. The fact that I even have to have mods is amazing, it means we have so many wonderful people in the community to look after. And quite honestly, my mods do a fantastic job of that, I'm always grateful for their hard work. One of my other mods, Mars, asks, why specifically Stardew content? I know I briefly touched on it uh, a few questions ago, but a fun fact is I bought Stardew ages ago in like 2021 as a game that I could stream on Twitch, and I tried streaming it, I got zero views during that time, but afterwards I kept playing it as a casual game and I actually got quite into it. So when it came to the start of last year, I was kind of able just to pick it up and play it having the prior knowledge, which was quite nice actually. And it worked heavily in my favor. So that's kind of why I was drawn to it. Smart Girl asks, do you have any tips for dealing with burnout or lack of inspiration, especially with a creative job like YouTube? For myself, workflow really negates the effects of burnout. Kind of. Because I spend a month working on one video, by the time I finished it, I've kind of already planned out the next video in my head and I'm usually ready to jump right into it. Um, but that certainly doesn't mean I haven't felt burnout before, but the biggest thing that you can do is to just take breaks away from the thing you're doing. When you come up with a good idea for a video, it's, it's not usually while you're making that video that you find the idea. So it's quite important to give yourself permission to take time away from a creative process to enjoy the freedom of being away from it. It usually just makes you more excited to go back to it and do it. Antonia asks me, where are you from? I don't know what it is about my accent, but I get Dutch a lot. People think I'm from the Netherlands, but I'm actually from New Zealand. Ice T asks, if you could beat up any NPC from Stardew Valley, who would it be and why would it be Clint? That's very fair. I think he's a bit weird and a bit creepy, so I'd be there with pitchforks in an instant if we turned on him. Neris and Spectrum ask, what's your favourite colour and what is my favourite cheese, respectively? My favourite colour is green, and my favourite cheese is smoked cheese. If you paired smoked cheese with crackers and jam... Oh my god! Oh, oh my god, you've got, a, you've got yourself a winner right there. Oh, it's so good. Moving on to the next one, Skullogix. Skullog... Skullogix. Skullog... Skullogix. I'm having a terrible time with these names. This person asks, what's your process for making a video? And Cookie follows up with, what editing software do you use? So my process is pretty simple and it's been the same for every video. I always record the gameplay first and then I go back and I skim through the gameplay while I write out the script for each video and then I record myself saying the whole script and then I edit it all together. Bada bing bada boom. And I do it using Premiere Pro. Uppy Duppy asks, which is better, tacos or burritos? Now that is a tough question, and there's not an easy way to answer this, but in a life or death situation and I had to pick one, it'd be the burrito. 
Caleb asks, everyone asks, how do you do XYZ Poxiel? No one asks, how is Poxiel? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. We're taking a quick break from the questions on day 50. We're halfway through this challenge and safe to say these questions have really helped time move forward. We have mountains of copper, gold, coal and iron ore. And we've now filled just over two chests worth of lucky rings. It's been a slow grind, but a grind nonetheless. But it's nice to see the monotony of panning every day paying off. And I'm excited to say that's us halfway through the challenge. Continuing onwards and upwards. Warm Potatoville asks, how do you feel about ducks? I'm quite a big fan of ducks actually, I think they're quite lovely. What's a name coming in with a nostalgic question, what was your favourite video game growing up? To that I would have to say the first Destiny game. It's the game all of my friends would play and we would grind it from the second we got home to the disturbingly early hours of the morning. And I just have so many fond memories of playing that game. Loxox asks, Poxiel, please no one has been able to help me with this. If quizzes are quizzical, then what are tests? Well now come on, that's an easy one. Tests are testicle. <laughs> Snowy Evergreen getting philosophical asks me, to pan or not to pan? Whether tis nobler in the mind to pan, the slings and arrows of panning, or to take arms against a sea of panning, and by opposing and panning? Ray's partner in crime asks, what's your favourite part about being a content creator? Also, have you eaten today? First of all, yes, I have eaten. Secondly, I think my favourite part is the community that comes with it. Reading and replying to all of the people who leave kind comments on my videos really pushed me to make more and better content for you all. AV asks an important question, what are my pronouns? I go by he him. L asks another what do you prefer question, soup or porridge? Now this may come as a shock to you, but neither. They're both disgusting. I'm speaking my truth, dammit. Movie Maker asks, who's your favourite Stardew Valley spouse? Abigail. I'm just kidding. Never again in a million years. My top pickers are probably Leah and Maru. Krobus coming in a close second as a roommate. Lucy Lou 42 asks, when is my birthday and how old are you? Well, as of this recording, I'm 23 and my birthday is the 17th of March, which funnily enough is St. Patrick's Day, which is probably why my favorite color is green. The final question I have here is from Miles, who asks, what are your favorite types of movies? I do love a good comedy movie, they're probably my favourite type to watch. Coming in very close behind that though are whodunit movies and action adventure movies. It was good timing on the questions finishing on day 61, I ended up panning the most amount of lucky rings I've ever panned up in one day, which was 12. Every day I'm bound to the endless 69. <laughs> nice task of panning more panning and even more panning it's day 75 and we're due for another chicken i think because i'm losing my mind a little i'm happy to report the chests have been filling up quite nicely our regular loot chest is looking very close to overflowing now from piles and piles of good stuff the main event however is of course the lucky rings and my goodness we have filled just over three chests worth of them that is an insane amount of lucky rings but unfortunately Unfortunately, I can't give up the number we have right now. Instead, I'm gonna save that for the final day because I'm a little tease and I don't want you to stop watching this video. Please don't click off the video. Well, there's literally not much else I can say while we wrap up these final days, so let's throw it into another montage. We're a single day away from the end of this absurd challenge, whoever thought this idea should be fired. Wait a minute. We added another final three rings to the total tally today, which means we're finally on day 100.
I never thought I would see the day. Having a look at the final collection of panning goods, the regular loot chest overflowed into the second one because we filled the first one to the brim. And we managed to fill four out of the five chests with lucky rings and a couple left over in the fifth chest brings our 100 days of panning total to... 147 lucky rings! Now that is a lot of lucky rings. But as is tradition in all of my 100 days videos and don't think this one is any different, I soak in the spa on my final day to reflect over the days that came before. And I'll be honest, this was probably the weirdest challenge I've ever done. I urge no one else to do this because it's simply not worth the trouble. However, like I said at the start of the video, this challenge was all because the channel hit 100,000 subscribers. That number to me is unfathomably large and and the fact that I have that many people subscribed to little old me is an amazing feeling. And if we've learned anything from the video, it's that I'm very grateful. And that's just as true, if not more true, each time I say it. I truly am so thankful for every single one of you and your support, it literally means the world to me. It's only onwards and upwards from here and I'm grateful I can now go back to panning every now and again and not every single day. Also massive shout out to my friend Soph for letting me use her music in the video. I'll link her Spotify in the description so you can go and listen to her amazing music. Alright, well I think I've said everything I wanted to say to you all except as always, you're wonderful people, so have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching.